Hi there, Mark here again, and welcome to part one of my build guide of the iconic Tamiya Hornet rear wheel drive off-road buggy. Now this is a 40 year old design, and it's quite an entry level buggy really, so it should be quite easy to put together. I'm gonna to go through the manual step by step, and I'm gonna build this buggy totally stock. The only thing I am gonna change are these plastic bushings, which I'm gonna replace with these metal bearings. Just a quick note before we start, um, the parts that you need or the extra parts for each step are listed down the side, these are from the separate bags and usually in a more modern kit you'd open parts bag A and use all the parts in that bag uh, before moving on to parts bag B and so on as you go through the manual. But this being an older design that's not the case, you see you've got to open all the parts bags and those parts are referred to here, it says BM and then the parts in BM1. Now BM hasn't got a label on it, but it is this bag, so that's bag BM. But all the other ones are labeled. It says here, if you can just see BB, and there's the parts from parts bag B and BD, and the parts from parts bag D, and so on. So look out for that as you uh, get the parts ready for each step. Right, let's just crack on with step one, which is attaching the rear shaft, or basically building up the gearbox and the differential. First thing I'm going to do is put this little cap B1 onto this part of the gearbox. So uh, you can see there's a hole here, you've got to cover this up. Um, there's a little pin to locate one of these holes on. And uh, in the other hole goes a 3x12 self tapping screw. Like so, just get that done up. So this is the right side of the gearbox case. And I'm just going to pop in a couple of those 1150 bearings, one in there and one on the outside. So that's the right side ready to go. Get the left hand side again, put the bearing, one on the inside, and one on the outside. Then get one of your dark drive shafts and get one of your larger bevel gears and just pop that on. And uh, that hex locates, as you can see, in the bevel. If you're using the plastic bushings, you'll need to grease this shaft. Then get your fibre 30 shaft, just pop it into that hole there, like so. Get your spur gear, and it's an 11.50 bearing in the one side. And your little 8.50 in the other side. Then you want to get a bit of grease onto this. And if you're using the bushings, you'll need some grease onto that bar as well. And that just sits over that bar. Make sure it spins okay. Then get your drive shaft and you've got this little metal space to put on which is a BD3 I think. Just pop that over. Then we can slide this into the gearbox housing itself through those bearings. Should just sit above the spur like that and spin freely. Now we can put a bit more grease on the other parts of the gears without getting it all over our fingers. Okay now it's all greased up, don't worry about it too much. It will. Uh, spread itself around when the gearbox starts running. Uh, now we're going to build this differential gear. Get one of your little 3x14 shafts and make sure you do put a bit of grease on this. And then get one of your smaller bevel gears, pop it onto the shaft, and then pop it into one of the slots in the, uh, the diff itself or the diff spur gear, like so. Do the same with the other two. Should look like that when you've done. Bit of grease on there. Get your other drive shaft and the other large bevel gear in the same, Put just pop that in. Pop that one into the right hand side of the gearbox itself and put a bit of grease on that bevel gear. And straight on to step two, where you, the first thing you're going to need is this little part BA1, a tiny little pivot. Again, put some grease on it. Insert that into the centre here of the uh, drive shaft, like so. Get your diff assembly and then pop that over the centre of that shaft as well. Okay, and then make sure it's engaging properly with the other gear. That looks okay to me. Then simply get the two after the gearbox, carefully line them up, and it should just slot together. Yep, it's all feeling good. Just give it a check. You turn the one shaft and uh, the other one should turn freely and it does so now we can get the uh, four 3b12 self tapping screws to hold it all together so that's one two three and the fourth one goes there do those up and that's the end of step two 
Step three is attaching the motor. So first thing you want to do is get your pinion and put in that tiny little grub screw. Just be able to see it there. Find the flat on the motor spindle and make sure you get that grub screw engaging on the flat. Just do it up loosely. You're going to need a ruler now. And set the end of the pinion 16 millimeters away from the base of the motor, as you can hopefully see there. When it's at the right distance, can give it a good nip up then you want the cover part b2 and your two 27 mil long screws they should go through there pop those into these two holes here in the uh, gearbox case like that and then we've got to pop in the pinion in the hole and try and line up the holes in the motor with those two screws you've just managed to get one in first this will do the trick yeah, can feel the other one's gone into the hole as well, so we'll just get those nipped up. And I don't know if you can see, but you can see the motor turning when I turn one of the axles now. So, yeah, that's all working smoothly. And to finish off this step, you've just got to put these parts, so now you've got part D2, that slides over there, and it lines up with that housing there on the gearbox. You've got this 3x21 screw with just the thread at the end, like that, so that pops in that hole. We screw that into the mount on the gearbox and just be careful not to over tighten this because I can feel that spinning already so yeah be careful with these little screws and to finish off it's the same but with part D6 again slot that over make sure it lines up with the housing and put in the other 3 by 21 screw and that is the end of step 3 Step four is attaching the damper mount and time to get your chassis out and as it shows here we're going to chop out this little bit of plastic here in the middle it's just from the moulding process I think it's a bit messy just give it a trim up with the knife there you go that looks a bit better then get plastic part D4 and that just slots up into that housing there it's a 3x15 screw and a 3mm washer Pop that through the hole, like so, and simply affix with a flange nut. Obviously 3mm, and then do exactly the same with part D5 in the other side. And it should look like this when you're finished. Step 5 is basically putting the little springs into the rear axle stays, which are parts D11 and D12. So you just get one of the parts get your 12mm self tapper and uh, pop in that hole there at the top just screw that in but you don't need to screw it in the whole way about that far will do and get your little spring uh, pop the one end in the hole at the back and pop the loop in the spring around the uh, tab that's sticking out there hopefully you can see that and then you just want to put the spring up above the screw that you've inserted so it should look something like this obviously make two in step six we're going to attach the gearbox to the rear of the chassis we're also going to fit on these rails onto the side of the chassis there uh, but to start off let's get the left part uh, so the left axle stay um, put the holes in it pointing upwards and then insert it into this hole here it's quite a tight fit and then just hold that in place with two 12 mil self tappers you're going to need this 95 mil shaft that's going to pivot on and it does show in here to put grease on that and also inside these housings here but I'm not going to do that because the grease will just attract and hold dirt and grit I'm going to apply some of this dry lubricant after I've built the car so get your gearbox assembly, get that shaft and uh, poke it all the way through. Pop the one side in that slot above the spring. Then get the right hand axle stay. Again, uh, insert that shaft into the bottom there. And then you've got to kind of fiddle it into the slot. There we go. So that's mounted okay now. Obviously just get this held in place again with two more 3x12 self tappers 
and once you've done that you can remove these temporary screws that were holding those springs up then your soft plastic part C1 that's going to go on the side here with one 3x12 self tapper again in there it's going to go into that hole in the uh, axle holder or the axle stay like so and then the front just clips into that slot in the chassis and you again hold that in place by another 3x12 just make sure that that is seated in properly into the slot there you go and obviously do exactly the same with part C2 on the other side of the chassis Step 7, 8 and 9 are making up the rear dampers and these are really strange dampers um, that's because they've got a piston as usual on a rod but also they've got a free moving piston I've never seen that before um, so yeah this free piston is a tiny little looks like a brass piece like there you go little round brass piece and you've got to fit on the black o-ring so it could be a bit tricky but uh, I'll try and wrestle this little o-ring onto that little brass piece there we go, it wasn't too bad after all, For just to get it close up. You can see there's a groove that that o-ring slots into, so that's nice and easy. Then get your piston shaft, or damper rod, whatever you want to call it, and you've got the tiny little 2mm e-clip that's got to go on the slot at the bottom. Easy just to press that on the bench. So there you go, that's that fitted. You've got your tiny little white damper piston made of plastic, pop that over and then we've got to get the other little e-clip on the top there we go so that's the piston fitted get your alloy damper cylinder, this has already got the seals in the bottom uh, and I have put a little bit of grease in there just to grease up those seals while the piston shaft goes through I just use this cocktail stick with a bit of grease on so pop it inside and just uh, lubricate those o-rings in there and simply get your piston shaft and push it in from the top so carefully with those threads through those o-rings and then pull it down and as it shows in the manual um, if you've got to hold this shaft now use some pliers that haven't got any teeth or if they have got teeth cover them up with some tape or something so you don't damage that shaft and then it's plastic part D13 just screws onto that thread and then screw that as far as it will go onto the shaft then on to step 8 which is where we're going to put the shock oil into the body of the shock itself and then fit that little free piston uh, in the top right so it shows here not to fill it all the way up um, I'll fit, I'm going to fill it close to the top and uh, we'll just deal with any spillage if it happens I think in general you need you better off putting too much oil in uh, and then have to clear up a little bit when you uh, it overflows rather than not having enough oil so I've filled that most of the way up now and now it's time to move that piston up and down and wait until we've got all the air bubbles out time to fit the free piston and if you look at it we've got a flat side to it and I don't know if you can tell but that side concave so we need the flat side at the top just pop that into the top of the shock I'm going to get some tissue again because the oil is going to come out and then you've got this little plastic part D8 which is used to push that piston down as far as it will go okay so that's all the way down now and uh, there is a, a lip inside the shock body which stops that piston going too far so we will just take that back out that uh, little tool and this Still a bit of shock oil on top of that free piston now, so I'm going to use my tissue to soak it up because we don't want any of that oil on top of the piston, it needs to all be underneath that free piston. Once you've done that, we've got to put this tiny little 2x4 screw in the middle to seal up that free piston. It does help if you've got a magnetic screwdriver like this, pop it in the hole. You can push down, like I said, because it, uh, the piston is stopping on that lip inside the body give that a nip up, you can't tighten it too much because the piston starts to spin so there we go and uh, I don't know if you can see but when I push the lower piston up and down 
the piston rod you can see that free piston going up and down uh, I think it is supposed to do that because there's this tiny damper spring that's got to go on top of that piston right in the middle of the screw get your rear shock spring and put it over the whole assembly just hold it down out of the way for a stiffer damper you fit this plastic part D3 over the top which will add some preload but I want to try mine with the lighter setting first so I'm going to leave that off and then I'm just going to just screw on the damper cap and there's your rear damper made and I've got to say it is very very smooth so whatever it is with those two pistons it does seem to do the job obviously make two and for this part of the build guide we're going to finish on step 10 because it's about halfway through the build we're just going to attach those dampers to the gearbox and the chassis so as you can see I've fitted the one side I'll just show you how to fit the other it's uh, exactly the same on both sides you've got your brass 4b6 tube and uh, that just fits over 3b12 screw that's going to hold the top of the shock into this hole here there you go and that ball end at the bottom of the shock has got to fit into that hole and you've got this metal damper mount and that's going to lock it into place line up with holes and it's the smaller 3x8 screws just two of those that hold that in place there we go so that's both shocks mounted and you might notice I didn't put any grease in there like it said in the manual but I will be spraying that dry lubricant in there when I finish the build okay then so as we've got the gearbox finished all mounted up with the, the shocks uh, that's all complete now so I think we'll call this to a halt and as always I hope you've enjoyed following along and I hope to see you on the next one. All the best. Cheers. Mm -hmm.